live, ladies and gentlemen. This show, Leading Into No Mercy, had some good stuff in it. So I'm interested in No Mercy. But there was stuff in here I just did not feel right about that didn't need to make any sense or just should have never been done. Now the first one I'm going to talk about, and I'm sure I might get some flack for this. This is the segment with Daniel Bryan, the five women who were in, I think, the nine o'clock hour or just before, or I can't remember when, but they were in one of the segments, the Su Susan G. Cohen breast cancer survivors. I want to make this clear. I'm not against breast cancer survivors. Unfortunately for me, my mother died to breast cancer treatment. She found out she had breast cancer. She went for radiation. She had complications to the chemotherapy. And unfortunately, she went to a coma and died. So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not against anybody who's fighting breast cancer, who knows someone who fought breast cancer or is fighting it, and who survived it. I'm not against that. But here's the thing. Last night on Raw, they had about, I think, three or four women who was on stage with Enzo and Big Cass. They got a titles. They got like three or four. No, four titles. I remember now. It was four women, four titles. That was cool. But it wasn't at the same time. And then you have five women here on SmackDown. Same situation. It was cool. But it was not cool for one simple reason. It does not help the WWE. This is Linda and Stephanie's campaign and belief. I don't have a problem with it. But these segments that they do with Susan G. Cohen can be too long-winded, can turn people off, or make people feel awkward. Look what happened with Daniel Bryan when he was trying to stir up the crowd to cheer for these women. The guys and girls there didn't have 100% of a problem doing it. But then when they started talking about better, more, more than pink, not better than pink, more than pink, saying these survivors are not just survivors, they're heroes, and now they're champions. Dude, you stretched it too far. I'm not against anyone who's a breast cancer survivor. And if these eight, no, these nine women had been working with Susan G. Cohen's foundation, and they literally have been going out and basically campaigning for them to get more money. Don't, forcing, well not forcing, trying to convince people to donate. Trying to convince people to care. Trying to go to rallies. Trying to set up rallies. Trying to go on television. If these nine women did that, I can understand why they came up with this concept. But these are nine regular women who survived breast cancer. And it's as great as that is, and it is great. I don't want to see no one die from that mess. Like I said, my mother did die from the complications of getting it done in 94. This does not help the WWE. It does not. Giving these nine women nine titles is great for them. It gives them a lot of inspiration and strength, and they could inspire other people. But we're talking about what they've done for the foundation. If they've done nothing for the foundation other than to go to it because they have breast cancer and they wanted to survive it and wanted to get help for it and wanted to get inspiration from the, the foundation for other people, I'm going to be honest. They don't really need to have those titles. They didn't need to have those segments. You can bring them out and say, just like last year, these are breast cancer survivors. They're our hero and you showed them love and affection. Giving them these titles just diminished the titles of SmackDown and Raw Women's Championship. Because you just gave away nine freaking titles when obviously you don't give your regular women the opportunity to get them. When is Naomi going to get a shot? Tell me. When? She won't. Unless they push. Unless people push and push for her to win. And I just feel like it wasn't necessary. Here's another segment I really didn't like. Bray Wyatt versus Kane and Randy Orton on the Titan Tron. Not good. No win from Bray Wyatt. Look, locking Bray inside of a container was interesting. 
But let's be honest here, ladies and gentlemen. I I'm being 100% honest. Can anybody remember in recent history that Bray Wyatt was able to win a match, able to win one, and not either job or look stupid later and try to play it off like he won the world? Tell me. You can leave a comment below. Because if I remember the last couple of months, he maybe won one match, but then had to job later and it made him look even worse. So when I look at this feud between him and Randy Orton, I don't see anything good for him. Because I'm going to say this honestly. If Bray Wyatt loses to Randy Orton at no mercy, I believe it's time for him to leave. I'm telling the truth. Bray Wyatt has done everything he can. I know he's making good money, but I'd rather see him go somewhere else. Let him go to ROH. Let him go to New Japan. Let him go to TNA. I don't care. This has gotten to the point where he has not become the eater of worlds. Unless they're going to turn him face and he's going to drop the eater of war world stick. I just do not see this working for him. This is terrible. And I'm sick and tired of seeing someone who is an undertaker type of person that should have been pushed. Has been dropped so much that it's a joke. Now, this is a joke. People cheering for him is a joke. People caring about him is almost a joke now. And that angers me because I care about him. And it makes me feel like I'm a joke. Now, Nikki Bella versus Alondra Bliss. Didn't last very long. Then we get Nikki Bella and Becky Lynch versus Alondra Bliss and Carmella. I don't have a problem having all four of them there. I would have liked that it, it wasn't a bad thing seeing Alondra Bliss pin the Becky Lynch. But I would have liked to focus more on Nikki Bella and Carmella instead of seeing them run up the runway. I know they're trying to build for No Mercy, but let's be honest here. Between the two feuds of Alondra Bliss and Becky Lynch compared to Carmella and Nikki Bella, the other one is better. Nikki Bella and Carmella is more compelling. And I'm not a big Nikki Bella fan. As I always said, Nikki Bella has done well. She has improved herself. But it's because of the build for them, you get more interest. Becky and Alondra Bliss is not well built compared to Carmella and Nikki Bella. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. Usos and American Alpha. You got Jay going... Going up against Jordan. I can't remember it. Jason Jordan. I always seem to forget his name. Was it a good match? Yeah. It was fast. Jordan wins. Then the Usos kicked the ass of American Alpha. Why are they jobbing? Why are the Usos who just changed their look, changed their theme song, changed their ring work, is jobbing to American Alpha? This just does not look good for the Usos. They just had a 180% change. Did a 180 degree turn. And the WWE is not pushing them. First, what they should have did was not let them be in the tournament. They should have been out of the tournament and not deal with the odd couple of Rhino and Heath Slater, who I do like. They should have been allowed to build up against American Alpha, against the VOD villains, against the Ascension. They should have been allowed, oh, and one of the team that doesn't exist. Not talking about hype bros. I'm talking about Eric Rowan and Bray Wyatt who should have had titles already. The Usos should not be jobbing. The Usos should be pushed. They're the only credible heel team they got and they should be pushed instead of jobbing and going in a position where they just don't seem like getting anything done. Yeah, they're taking out American Alpha's legs, but it doesn't mean they win the titles and no mercy. That's just how I feel. Now I'll get to the other titles. I mean, not other titles. <laughs> other teams. <coughs> Hype Bros versus Vaude Villains. And what happened to the music for the Vaude Villains? No music. Then you see the Ascension watching. Excuse me. Still drooling. What? What's that? 
You don't give any of them backstage segments in the last couple of weeks. You don't try to say that the Ascension, Victor and Connor are finally figuring out that they can dominate. The only thing you do is just stick them out there and let them just stare at each other. What does that give you? It's not a feud. And I was hoping that they would make a feud with the Ascension, with someone, because they should have been pushed a while ago and we should have had them at least have one title run. Hell, I like the VOD villains. An 1899 team acting in the 21st century. That's a different concept you get. And I just don't see anything from them. John Cena, Dean Ambrose, AJ Styles. I'm doing that now because you know the ones I really want to focus on. Hmm. It was okay segment. But it makes me nervous. Dean spoke for John. AJ spoke to John. I gotta admit, between Dean and AJ, Dean spoke not only the best, but he spoke the most honest. I enjoyed seeing that little segment because out of anybody who has talked to John Cena in a feud in the last six or seven years, who said the same thing as Dean, where there's always something going on, he was the most honest out of anyone that I've seen. And he felt the most honest. So it makes you hope that Dean Ambrose is going to be the one that's going to win because of how the final fight was and the setup for Dean. But you still don't know. And that scares me. I'd rather keep the title on AJ. I'm being honest here. For me personally, I want to see AJ hold the title for a while, not drop it after two or three months. Hold it for a while and do something with him. Give him a credible storyline. Let him drop the, the face that runs the place. Let him drop the part about beating up on John Cena. Let AJ do something different. But I have a feeling they're going to go with Cena. And that scares me. That truly scares me. It's not because he'll win 16 titles. It's the point that the WWE does not 100% value their wrestlers. And they're not really doing it right. That's just me. Final thing you've been waiting for. Miz TV and Dolph Ziggler and the segments that they showed. It was well done. I enjoyed it. Seeing the Spirit Squad, two members out of the Spirit Squad come back was interesting. Seeing them kick Dolph's ass was interesting. Seeing that Dolph tried to kick and also spoke so well. Uh, the kicking, well, he did some pretty good super kicks, but it's no different than what he normally does. But his speaking was well done. But here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't the first time Dolph has done this in the last six years. This is the second time. He did it last time with Chris Jericho. If anybody remembered, he had a match with Chris Jericho to get a contract. Contract versus career. This is what happened to him last time. So this isn't something new for him. But to be honest, I'm hoping he loses. Because in real life, I really believe Nick should leave. I want to see him go away. Not to stop doing wrestling, but to go somewhere else. Because let's be honest here, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. Dolph Ziggler has been around a long time. Whether you believe, like the Slug Daddy, that he's a piece of shit or not. And the Slug Daddy has his rights. Not everyone is meant for the main title scene. I've said it myself. Dolph Ziggler is a main event jobber. He can go in the main event. He can hold a title briefly as a transitional champion. Help some storylines along. But he's not meant to be the head star. He's just not. But the problem I see is he's never been given the opportunity to actually show it. The video package they made for him made it really clear that that's what's happened to him. The wrestling promotion has not given him a chance to stick with it for a couple of months and let the people decide if he could be something or he's nothing. They basically have dropped him every time something's about to happen. Now someone either politicked or sucked more dick than him, not being disrespectful. A lot of times you got to politic and kiss someone's ass and suck dick. 
Not literally. You know what I mean. So he's never really gotten very far. He's had a few moments where he's had a chance to win, but then he's never done anything. So at this point in time, he needs to leave. He's gotten a couple of million a year for the last how many years? Why not by now just go? I want to see the man do something different. Let him go to TNA. Yes, a lot of people are not going to like him in TNA, but dude, he still has potential to do something. It doesn't mean he'll be incredibly great wherever he goes, but at least it'll be a new experience for him. The WWE will not be with him anymore because they've always used him to get good matches done. But they never really gave him what he wants. Or at least give him what he wants and see if the crowd will care about him. The show is okay. But the two things I spoke about when it came to Bray Wyatt and the Susan G. Cohen and the women there just did not feel right. The women felt like they were being used and Bray Wyatt is not getting anywhere. I really believe it's at, if he doesn't win at no mercy and actually get pushed after that either as a face or they actually start letting him win and then catch a title, he needs to leave. That's just me. You guys tell me how you feel below and have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.